starting your journey as an assistant principal can feel overwhelming from balancing staff expectations and student needs as well as your administrative responsibilities and all of this while you're trying to establish yourself as a leader. Well, what if I told you that there were essential strategies that could help you from day one? So stick around and watch this entire video because we're going to give you three strategies that are going to help you go from surviving to thriving. Grab a pen, a piece of paper and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or content. All right, everybody, well, welcome in and today, we're going to take some feedback that we've been receiving from folks in the community because I've been seeing your messages. I got the job. I got the job. I'm now an assistant principal. I can't wait to get started. And then I saw this message this week that said, can you start to talk about how you can thrive or do well as a brand new assistant principal? So today we're going to explore that. It's the end of the summer, we're moving into the fall, school has just started back up. And so I want you guys to hit the ground running. If you are a new leader, if you're an aspiring leader, these are going to be ideas and really best practices that you can use day in and day out to help you be more effective in your role as a formal leader or an even informal leader. They are some best practices that you can utilize. So without further ado, let's jump in to strategy number one. So the very first thing you want to do as a new assistant principal is you're going to want to build trust with your staff and your students, the people that you're responsible for, the people you are called to lead and support. You got to build trust with them because one of the core tenets of effective leadership is somebody who is approachable, somebody who is transparent, and somebody who also follows through on the commitments that they make. And so the first way you can do this is to create space and opportunities for trust to be built and conversations to be had. So find a way to create an open door office hours policy. Create that time, that space on your calendar, make it defined, have it be a time that's set aside for students to be able to come and see you. Maybe that's before and after school, but you prominently tell them when that is, you post that, you put it in announcements, you make sure that people know, you make sure your students know that you're available, your door is open at that time. But then also create that space and an opportunity for your staff as well, that you have time to see them, to let them bounce ideas off of you. Having an open door policy is a, is a great, first step at telling folks that you're there for them, that you're available to them and that you want to be collaborative and that you want to be connected. It'll spark conversation. It'll spark collaboration and it'll spark connection. And that's really, really critically important as you're building your leadership capacity, as you're building your leadership profile with your students and with your staff. So focus on building trust and have that open door policy where you're available to your folks. And that is step number one. Let's talk about strategy number two. So the second thing you want to do to be effective as a new assistant principal, and if you want to hit the ground running right now, as we start the beginning of the school year, is you want to make sure that you have an effective time management and prioritization system. The role of assistant principal, it can be daunting. It can be outright overwhelming to support students, to supervise and manage staff, to take care of the physical plant, to support the principal and their vision and what they're trying to get done. That is the role of the assistant principal. So you've got to have a system. You've got to have something that you can rely on that will help you determine what to do first, second, third, fourth, and 15th. And so, a concrete strategy that you could use, and I've used this 
throughout my career in different ways. And even if I'm not formally using it today, I still filter things this way in my brain because I've used it for so long. And so it was made very famous by President Eisenhower and it's called the Eisenhower Matrix. So the Eisenhower Matrix has four boxes and those four boxes help you to categorize your task, the things that you must do. And each of those boxes are categorized as follows. You have one box, which is these are things that are urgent and important. The next box is these things are urgent, but not important. The next box is these things are important, but not urgent. And then the final box is these things are not urgent and they're not important. If you think through your entire list of to do's, your entire list of responsibilities, your task list, and you start to think about what is urgent and important, what is important but not urgent, what's neither urgent or important, you can then start to prioritize and manage your time in such a way that you deal with what is most important at the time. You deal with what is most urgent at the time and you will begin to come up with your own ranking system, categorization system, and just one word of caution or one, not a word of caution. That's actually not accurate. One word of advice as you're starting to develop your matrix and the way you categorize, be in constant conversation with your principal about this. Let them know how you see these tasks rolling through. Let them know how you're prioritizing them and how you're thinking through it and make sure that there are alignments between you and them. Your job is to execute on their vision. Their job is to support you as, as your principal. It's their job to support you and to help you to be successful. So the more you're communicating, the more you're talking through that prioritization system with your principal, the more strong and robust it's going to be and the more resilient you're going to be as a leader. So focusing on your time management, your prioritization and having a system by which you categorize and then prioritize everything that you do is going to be a best practice and it's going to build your leadership capacity. So implement this and incorporate it into your practice. It's going to help you immensely. And that is strategy number two. All right, before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what systems do you use to manage your time and prioritize your task? Share that with us in the comments below so we can share these ideas with our community. The more we build that community and the more we share the wisdom that is built into this community of leaders and educators and professionals, it is enriching the lives of everybody, present company included. So I want to know and I want you to share in the comments below, what are the types of systems that you have built for time management and prioritization? Share that in the comments below and let's talk about strategy number three. So the third essential strategy that you must have, that you must have capacity built around to be an effective assistant principal is you have got to be able to navigate difficult conversations and you must do it with confidence. Assistant principals are tasked with having difficult discussions, difficult discussions with employees and team members, difficult discussions with parents, difficult discussions with students. You've got to be built to have difficult discussions to be an effective educational leader. You've got to be able to have courageous conversations. You've got to be able to have tough, difficult, performance growth driven conversations with staff. You've got to be able to just kind of break it down and go knee to knee, knee to knee with a parent to really walk them through some of the challenges that their student may be facing or navigating some of the challenges they may be having with one of your employees. But you've got to be able to sit knee to knee with somebody and look them in the face and talk them through it. So you've got to be able to have that conversation with confidence. And finally, you've got to be able to talk to students. You've got to be able to level with them. You've got to be able to support them, but you've also got to be able to redirect them. You've also got to be able to support and drive your expectations for who they will be while they're on your campus, what they are able to do while you're, while they're on your campus. But you've got to have a set of skills to be have to be able to have those difficult conversations. 
And so a concrete strategy that to be able to navigate these difficult conversations, you can use lots of different models. But in this particular case, we're just going to give you the SBI model. So the situation, the behavior, and the impact. So the situation, what happened? As a leader who needs to have these conversations, we're going to be really clear. We're going to be very specific. We're going to be very factual about the situation, the who, the what the when, the where, the why, and in some cases, the how. But the situation and laying out the parameters of the situation is gonna be critically important for laying down that foundation. And then the behavior, what actually happened? What actions occurred? What circumstances unfolded? The behaviors, the attitude, the act, the violation, the misunderstanding, the misapplication, whatever the case may be, after you've laid out the situation, then we have to talk about the behavior. And then after we've laid out the situation and the behavior, then we talk about the impact. This is what's happened as a result. This is how this person has now been impacted. This is how now the school must now move forward. This is the way that the teacher will now have to do their work. This is now going to be the result of the student's action or behavior. This is now what's going to happen moving forward. But talking through that in a very effective way for folks, walking them through situation, behavior, and impact arms you with the ability to focus on the right things in the conversation. When you're prepared to be able to walk through it that way, then now you can feel confident. You can feel confident as you lay out the argument for why you're making the decision that you're making. Because remember, your difficult conversations usually end with, and you've decided the following. You've decided that unfortunately, a student may have to have a disciplinary or consequence I don't like to use the word discipline necessary, but there may be a consequence that comes as a result of the situation, the behavior and the impact. There may need to be a different set of expectations, a different environment that may need to be explained to a parent. And your decision is a student is going to move from one class to another. You may make the decision that a request for a staff member to attend a professional development, a conference, an activity that because of a situation, a behavior and an impact, they will no longer be able to do that. But all of this foundational strategy of having a narrative way to communicate and communicate with confidence is all to support a decision that you will make as a leader. Because we as leaders have to make tough decisions all the time. We have to have difficult discussions and conversations all the time. When you have a framework to follow, it will give you confidence. It will allow you to be able to be in that space and to be able to thrive and be successful, which is what I want for you. And so as you move forward and you keep thinking about how do I do this and do this effectively, keep thinking about how you build your leadership skills and your capacity. And to get more information about building your leadership skills and your capacity, you can check out this next video, which is right here. And if you want more information about resources and coaching and mentoring and our weekly newsletter, check the description below. And continue to grow your skills and your knowledge and your capacity. Keep watching these episodes. Keep giving feedback. Keep dropping comments in the descriptions below and don't forget if you've gotten this far in the video don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the like button share this video with a friend share it with 10 friends because we want to continue to build our collective capacity as leaders and we want to continue to grow and build just an army of educational leaders who are thinking about supporting students building schools and making our communities better so 
Don't forget to check all that out in the description below. And we're going to see you on our next episode. Take care of each other and be well. We'll see you soon. Thanks.